Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Illustrator tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com and today, well you saw the title, here's an example of what we're creating. I'm just going to scroll it over the screen here while I talk. I'm going to show you how to create your own vector texture. I'm going to show you then how to apply that to an image or a graphic or whatever, really a graphic or some sort of illustration here in Illustrator. But maybe most valuable is there's a free vector texture download pack link is down there in the description uh, now if you enjoy this video tutorial make sure you hit the like button please hit the little red button and subscribe or maybe it's not red if you've already subscribed in which case thank you very much and you can also support the channel by picking up the photoshop course it's just a photoshop course all about how to retouch images if you're here for illustrator it might not necessarily be your thing but if you feel the inclination to donate or something, uh, you know what? I feel like I'm begging if I say that. If you're interested in Photoshop, it's a, a Photoshop course all about how to retouch images. Let's just get into this tutorial and check out how to do this. So this is the, the vector texture pack that I have that I'm giving away for free. You can go and download it. Uh, it's been created from a few images and a few different textures and splatters and things like that. And this is great and you're going to find great use uh, with these textures and it really is going to make this effect easy. In fact, you can see here again is the effect in Adobe Illustrator. But how do you create one of these uh, textures? Well, here's how you do it. I'm going to do it out here in sort of the gray pasteboard area of my Illustrator document. Go file and come down here and choose place. And I'm just going to place an image. I have a stock photo here on my uh, desktop called texture.jpg. Go ahead and place that. And uh, click wherever you would like to place it. There we go. I'm going to just zoom out a little bit. Maybe I'll make it a little bit smaller. It's really not going to make that much of a difference because at the end of the day, the texture is going to be vector. So we can scale it and, you know, shimmy it as much or as little as we want. Pretty simple at this point. You got your texture. You simply come up here and choose image trace. So illustrators can say, look, the tracing may proceed slowly. This is a large image. You sure you want to do this? I'm not going to do the rasterization it's not going to make that much of a difference in this case i'm just going to hit okay and you can see illustrator does its thing it's pretty quick um and now there is an option here under window we have an image trace panel let's go ahead and open that sucker up and it appeared off screen here let me drag it on the screen uh we have image trace and one of the things we can do probably the most important thing uh, a mode of black white uh black and white is great uh, i typically just stick with the default uh or i'll go black and white logo sketched art something like that i want something that's very simple just blacks and whites i definitely don't want like high or low fidelity photo i don't don't want to introduce a bunch of color and all kinds of things like that. The threshold will tend to um, change the way the texture is uh, quite drastically. So if we reduce the threshold, you're going to see Illustrator is going to sort of redraw what we've got going on here. And it has notably less black. Uh, now, the way that this these textures work is we're going to get rid of all that white background. You can see here I, I converted the black to white just because I think it looks cooler over the black box. Uh, but it starts out as a bunch of little black speckles. So if you just want a more speckly texture, you could like get your speckly texture there. And you could duplicate this image and you could crank the threshold up to get more chunks of black here. You're going to see when I crank the threshold up, we're going to get bigger, bulbous, you know, chunkier bits of black and there you go you see you have a, a very different texture and just as kind of a side note coolness here in the image trace panel you can see it's created 30,000 almost 31,000 paths and almost a quarter million anchor points really pretty cool stuff uh, so I don't want the threshold to be this high so I'm just going to actually undo that command or control z it's going to just go through the progress one more time and give us this really lightly speckled texture which is exactly what I want and what I need to do at this point is go expand see this expand button up here expand and and actually before I go any further I'm going to pop this over open in my layers panel here and just lock all of these other textures, uh, these texture one through nine. This is going to be the .ai file you download and you'll see nine different textures all named. I just want to focus on this one group and it is a group. So I'm going to go object ungroup and you're going to see it's going to create a bajillion different paths. I'm going to deselect this because what I'm most interested in, I'll also close my image trace panel here. What I'm most interested in is selecting all of the light stuff and getting rid of it. This is a great opportunity to use the maybe rarely used magic wand tool here in Illustrator and just select the light area like that and simply hit your delete key. And look at that. We're left with just these black speckles, at which point we can select them all, regroup them, object group, group them up. And what I like to do is just convert it to a square for just, I don't know, it's, it just feels more comfortable and easy to stack them. So we can come up here. We've got our width and our height. So I'll set this to like, I don't know, 2000 pixels wide by 2000 pixels high. We've got a nice little square texture. Boom. Just like that from our image. And if you're doing it over a black background, obviously all you have to do is come over here, select the fill color, double click on that, convert it to a white fill and voila. That's how you create a vector texture very easily in Adobe Illustrator. Again, if you don't have access to images, you don't want to go through that process, there are these 
uh, nine textures that I've gone ahead and converted and created that you can go ahead and download and use for whatever you like. Let's come over here to our logo file. I'm going to wipe out this texture that I have here with the power of post-production and we're going to add this texture. So I have this little logo mark. I also have this, the best is yet to come. Uh, we can, you, know, you can use anything you want. The point is it's great if you take all of your individual pieces of artwork and you group them up. So you would highlight them and go object, group, boom, right there, group, and you'd have this nice, compact, comfortable layer group over here in your layers panel. And at this point, all you need to do is come here and open up your transparency panel. If you don't have it, window, transparency. And we have an, uh, an instance of our artwork showing up here. You can see there's our group. And then we have this little other thumbnail that says, hey, look, double click to create an edit and opacity mask. Let's double click that. And all of our artwork disappears because by default, the opacity mask when you add it is filled with black. In fact, this little option here, clip, is checked on. If we deselect that, it's going to flip and fill our mask with white, thereby showing all the artwork. Hey, pretty cool. So how do we work with these textures? Well, it's pretty simple. Number one, I'm. we can go with the one we just created. I'm not going to. I'm just going to delete it to get it out of the way, and I'm going to unlock all of my other textures. Uh, we can select here a texture that we want to begin with. Uh, let's go with like the mm, – let's go with this texture here in the middle. And all we want to do is go edit, copy, copy to our clipboard, come over to the new document. We have that layer mask selected and then hit command or control V to paste it into our document. Now, if I deselect it, nothing has happened. Why? Well, because the texture is white. So we want to change the fill color of the texture to black. Now, I want to do this using the color panel up here. By the way, window, color, color panel. But we want to hit this little flyout menu up here in the top left corner of the color panel and choose CMYK. And we want to set the K all the way to 100% and also the CMY and uh, the CM and Y. So all four should be at 100% black and you're going to get a really good rich black. We can just stretch this texture out so it covers our entire uh, object. We can deselect and look at that. We're starting to get a nice textured effect. If I shift click on the mask, it's going to temporarily disable it. There it is without our mask. There it is with the mask. You can see we're starting to get some grit and grime and grunge happening. All right, not good enough yet. Let's add a little bit more. Let's go with this really cracked effect, Commander Control C to copy. We still have the mask selected, Commander Control V to paste it in place. Uh, we need to fill it with black, so let's go back to CMYK and just go black, 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 black. You can also create a, a very rich black swatch that'd be a little bit faster, but I'm not going to go through the process of doing that here for this tutorial. Uh, let's just stretch this out over the entire object. Boom, deselect, and now we have all of our text is cracked, and the text is actually cracked. The, the importance of using the masks to do this and not just throwing some black lines on top of our text is if we come to like, uh, not the background image, but maybe the background color, and we change the background color here. Uh, let me see if I, I don't remember how I set this up. We'll actually change the... Yeah, and we, we change the background color to be like red. That red is going to actually show through all of those cracks in our text. If we change this to a you know a brighter blue, that blue is actually going to show through. So all of that kind of stuff is going to end up showing through the finished product. And you know that's important because it just you know you, you went the extra mile with your artwork. It looks good. It looks good even when you zoom in and take a look at it and really examine the details. That's the importance of creating the mask. I'm going to lock up the background layer once more. To get back and to edit the mask again, we have this top group. That's where our artwork is. It's the visible group. We want to actually select this little circle, right? So when you select that, it's going to select the group and therefore show the mask that's being applied to this uh, layer group. And at this point, you know, you could you could go crazy with it. We could say, you know what? I'm going to take this kind of like brick texture as well. Let's take this over. So make sure you have the mask selected. Command or Control V to paste it in there. I'm going to stretch it out over uh, over my artwork here, and I'm going to fill this bad boy with black. And then I'll just deselect. And you can see that's really tearing up the artwork. Uh, but hey, you know what? That may be exactly what you want. And if it's exactly what you want, well, then of course it's exactly right. Now, if you've enjoyed this tutorial, make sure you leave a little like on it. Hit the little like button. Also, make sure you subscribe to my channel and if you use Instagram and you use this effect or create something with the effect I would love to see it my Instagram handle is at tutvid t-u-t-v-i-d tag me on it or tag me in a comment or whatever you like I would love to see it I'll try to get in and like and comment I always try to you know mix it up with people in the Instagram community as well it's a lot of fun uh, over there and uh, for creating a not only a distressed texture but actually applying it to some artwork in Adobe Illustrator that's it get it got it good Nathaniel Dodds and tutvid.com I'll catch you in the next one.